the organization of the experience and an extremely simple analysis. Logical relations carry most of the semantic plot, including uh, example 10 system. They describe complex units. Uh, so we can see the difference between groups and phrases. A group is in some respect uh, equivalent to the word complex. There is a combination of words here on the basis of a particular logical relation. A uh, group means a uh, group of words. For example, a red nose. And uh, the phrase, a phrase is different from a group in that, uh, whereas a group is an expansion of a word. A phrase is the contraction of a clause starting from opposite ends the to achieve roughly the same status on the rank scale as units that lie somewhere intermediate between the rank of a clause and that of a word. Uh, for example, <coughs> a long nose. Uh, the phrase here um, is a reduction of a clause that has a long nose. And um, look at the screen, you can see um, the, the figure. Uh, group and phrase classes in relations to clause function. And uh, the group functions in clauses, uh, in terms of the model structure of the clause, nominal groups serve as subject or complement, verbal groups as finite plus uh, predicator, and ever ever groups as a term. In terms of the experiential structure, nominal groups serve in participant roles, verbal groups as process, and adverbial groups in circumstance roles. Um, and uh, there are some main classes of group, and in this chapter we will go through three main classes of group, including nominal groups, verbal, uh, verbal groups, adverbial groups, and um, the other classes of group, including prepositional groups, conjunction groups. Uh, in nominal group, uh, there are seven functional components. Uh, they are didactic, numerative, epithet classifier and thing. So um, at the um, figure experience of structure of part, uh, we have the, the, the following cause, those two splendid old electric trains with pencil crafts. And uh, most of this, this cause consists of one long nominal group, uh, as you can see on the screen. So uh, the first component, um, dietic, uh, the, the dietic element indicates whether or not some specific subset of the thing is intended, and if so, which? So we have two, two types of dietic, specific dietic, um, including adverb for now. Okay, to please, would you mind talking more loudly? Uh, speak yes. up. Okay, speak up, <laughs> please. Uh, so there are two types of uh, dietic. So can 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 you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you. So um, as, as you can see, we um, there are two types of dietic: specific dietic and non non specific dietic. <clears throat> and. Uh, these items function, functioning as specific, didactic, um, demonstrative, and possessive. Uh, for example, this, that, this, though, and the, uh, whichever or whatever uh, about possessive. Um, my, your, our, his, her, is, their, ones, whosoever. Um, which person? Uh, and uh, this is the determiner function of as non-specific dietic. <coughs> uh, with non-specific dietic, um, the, the system in singular or non-singular must now are grouped together with blue, 
in a category of non-singular. Um, so uh, and girls with a singular, with some with non-singular, mass or plural in this table on the screen. Um, there may be a second dialectic element in the nominal group, uh, one which adds further to the identification of the subset in question. Uh, we will refer to these as post dialectic or dialectic number two. Um, not only specifies, but also identifies a subset of the class of thing by referring to its fame or familiarity, its status in the test or its similarity or dissimilarity to some other design subset, uh, most frequently occurring as post dialectic are the same, different, identical, complete, entire, whole, above, aforementioned, obvious, odd, ordinary, original, particular, possible, probable, regular, respective, special, typical, usual, various, and well-known. Yes, please, Miss Dong. And uh, uh, we are moving to the numerative. The numerative element indicates some uh, numeral feature of the subset, uh, either quantity or order, uh, either exact or inexact. Uh, so the numerative are given in the table on the screen. Uh, so. We can see the quantitative, uh, numerative, or quantitative specify either an exact number. Um, for example, uh, two chains, uh, four chains, um, or in exact number, a few, a few chains, or a lot of chains. And uh, the ordering numerative specify either an exact place in the order uh, or an insect place. Um, and the next component is epithet. Uh, the epithet indicates some quality of the subset. For example, how long blue fast. Uh, this may be an objective property of the thing itself, or it may be an expression of the speaker's subjective attitude towards it. Uh, for example, splendid, silly, and fantastic. Uh, so the principal difference between the two is that uh, experiential uh, epithet are potent, uh, personally defining, uh, whereas interpersonal ones are not. So about yeah, make 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 this list um, experience. Epithet describes defines participants of the experiential cause, but not circumstances or processes. For example, a long chain about interpersonal epithet. Uh, it describes speaker's attitude. Uh, for example, such a mighty chain. And um, the classifier, uh, the class classifier classifier indicates a particular subclass of the thing in question, more or less any feature that may serve to classify a set of things into a system or a small set. Uh, for example, electric chains, essential chain, wooden chains, toy chains, and sometimes we the same word may function as epithet or as classifier, for example, fast chain. And um, the difference between epithet and classi classifier is not a very sharp one, but there are sig uh, significant differences. Classifier do not accept degrees of comparison or intensity. Uh, we cannot have a more electric chain or a very electric chain, and they tend to be organized in mutually exclusive and exhaustive sets. A chain is either electric steam or diesel. So we have now identified the nominal group functions of dietic. Um, 
numerative epithet classifier and thing and the class of word which most typically relies the function are as follow uh, dietic determinant dietic number two adjective numerative numeral epithet adjective classifier now or adjective thing is noun and these four classes uh, now is a common noun adjective numeral and uh, determinant are all different kinds of noun they are subclasses of this one primary class this larger class are sometimes referred to as nominals to avoid confusion with noun in its narrower more specific sense verbs may into enter into a nominal group they function as epithet or classifier verbs function is the in the nominal group in one of two form uh, the first form is present active participle uh, verb ing or for example losing as in a losing battle uh, the second uh, forms is past passive or interactive participle uh, for example lost as in a lost cause and we can see the um, example for verb as classifier and verb as uh, epithet Uh, now we are moving to the ordering, uh, the ordering, the principle of the ordering. Uh, we move from the less permanent to the more permanent and follow from the left to the right from specification, quantitative, uh, quantitative and the classifiers. Um, so um, two more specific qualifiers. Uh, unlike the elements that precede the thing, which are words or sometimes word complexes, like 200, very big, what follow the thing is either the phrase or clause. Qualified can be finite or non-finite clauses or prepositional phrases. For example, we have the phrase and the clause below. And beside that, Qualifiers can be finite or non-finite clauses or prepositional phrase uh, present with the figure uh, six by three. Uh, with only rare exceptions, all qualifiers are ranked shift as they in their own structure are of rank higher than or at least equivalent to that of the nominal group, which is the structure they are downgraded to function within and they are embedded clauses or phrases. So we can see three examples here. And uh, the first sentence is an uh, embedded phrase or group and uh, the first two one uh, are and the last About proper names, names of particular persons individually or as a group institution of all kinds and places. They may consist of one word or many words. Uh, they may consist of two or more words, such as uh, Polly Perkins of Cathay Pacific Airlines, obviously have their own internal structure, but we shall treat all such instances simply as thing. And uh, about com common noun, their names implies a noun that are common, for example, uh, table took um, and 
they categor categorize into countability, uh, animacy, generality. For example, many classes of things are organized in the form of taxonomies. A wild strawberry is a kind of strawberry, but a strawberry is a kind of berry, and a berry is a kind of fruit. Um, the next part is a logical structure of the nominal group. Uh, the structure of the nominal group from a different and complementary point of view, the presentation of logical semantic relations. We will take account of just one such relationship, that of subcategorization. A is a subset of X. Uh, this has usually been referred to in the grammar of the nominal group as modification. Uh, this time, we start with the most general term change, the group head moving to the left, the modifiers. The basics of the modification of course shifts as we move to the left, what type of, what quality of, how many, and so on. Uh, the head can be modified by pre-modifiers or post-modifiers. The distinction between them is not a functional one, but depends on the rank of the modifying term compared uh, where the board shake by the roadside. With a roadside shake made out of the weather board, these two are not um, synonymous, but the difference lies in the information structure. The item located at post modify has the greater, greater potential as news. It can be the new information unit. Uh, but the post modify does not itself into the logical stru structure because it is not construed as a word complex, but as a non-finite clause. And uh, the logical analysis brings out the hypothetic basis of remodification in the nominal group. Uh, hypothetic relations uh, is the expansions by modification. The sample below is generated as an interpretation of the same functional relationship. A is modified by B, which is modified by G, which is, and so on. That is why the modifiers are marked by letters to show their order, not by different functions. So uh, we can see the difference um, between the figures 6.1 and 6.6. .6. Um, in the figure 6.6, .6, the logical structure, the elements are marked by the letters to show how they are generated by the same functional relationship, or we can uh, call it a unified structure. Uh, and in the figure number 6.1, the experiential structure, the modifiers are marked by different function. Uh, we can call it multivariate structure. And uh, to summarize about my part, um, we can uh, say that a group is a group of words and among words in the groups are structure. There are some types of group, nominal group, verbal group, uh, adverbial group, conjunction group, preposition group. And a nominal group is typically a group with a noun or pronoun as its head and the remaining elements are modifiers. And there are seven functional components of the nominal groups. They are thing, didactic, post didactic, memorative, epithet, classifier, and qualifier. I'm trying to I am trying to turn to the next slide but cannot. Yeah, okay, so the person, your friend is talking and if 
friends, if you have any questions, please, you know, pause your friends and ask questions. Okay? Yeah. Now, please, continue, Bảo Thư. Uh, yeah, uh, so um, the last part, he, he has some example uh, for my part, um, the nominal group. So you can see on the screen, um, he has some clauses. Yeah, please, my, that's all for my part. Yes, uh, good evening teachers and friends. So uh, let's move on to verbal group, a uh, verbal group, conjunction group, and prepositional group. So verbal group is a, the constituent that functions as a finite plus predicator and uh, or as predicator alone if there is no finite element in the mood structure clause as a change and as process in the transitive structure transitivity structure clause as presentation clause a representation for example someone's been eating my porridge so you can uh, we can see that the verbal group is has been eating and a verbal group is the expansion of a verb as normal nominal group is the expansion of a noun. For example, with the, the the group above, we can see that it is a lexical verb, has its finite verb, and being functions as auxiliary verb. So, it's experiential structure of verbal group, the experiential structure of the finite verbal group, finite standing for finite op operator plus event, with optional elements, auxiliary, one or more auxiliary, uh, aux auxiliary. Finite verbal group, grant from short, maybe one word item, where the finite is filled with the event, and there is no auxiliary to long strings. The verbal group begins with the finite and ends with the event, with its branches, the process, and the represents the core of the lot lexical meaning. So now for example, A, we have eight. So in this, the finite and the event, it's just one. But example two, couldn't help been going to be being eaten. Here we have the finite and we have uh, four, five auxiliary and one event, and the event is eaten. So the verbal group with marked polarity and contrastive tense Polarity is the negative or positive. For example, has not been working. Here we can see that has is a finite in present and not polarity, negative mark, and being is the auxiliary in the past and contrastive, and working is the event. Logical structure of verbal group. The log logical structure of the verbal group realize the system of tense again has been eating makes three ten choices the first one presence because we have has is a present with the s a uh, singular uh, third singular form and past is when the verb have plus uh, en as in been and present expressed by the verb be plus the ing for example eating so uh, when we look at the example here uh, is has been or uh, has been eating. Uh, we can see that uh, this is the building up present in past in present tense. And we have the primary tense head and the secondary tenses. In the primary tense are uh, the, the head, we, we have past or present future and relative to speech event. And in the second tense, secondary tenses, we have past, present, future relative to the time selected in the previous tense. So this is the realization of primary and secondary school as followed in, in this figure. So we, we can see that uh, the past, the present, and the future, we have the primary and the secondary tense like this. And naming the tenses, we will name the tenses 
backwards, beginning with the deepest and using the preposition in to express the serial modification. And notations are the symbol for tenses. So we will use minus for past, plus for future, and zero for present. So uh, when we look at the example here, was going to help working. And from here, we can see that a being is the present. And then we, we move backwards. So being is the past and um, going to is future and was in past again. So that means we have uh, present in past, in future, and, and in past, the was in past. So uh, we move to the elements of the verbal group. So um, poorly, the verbal group is poorly grammatical. And the options are present are closed, not open-ended. So uh, we have three, uh, three things to remember. The first is the past, present, and future. And polarity, we have positive and negative. Uh, we don't have the notations for the positive and negative, so we just write POS or NEG. And the voice, we have active and passive, and we use the abbreviation like this. And we know that the negative and the passive is marked. Mm -hmm. So passive verb groups, the active has no explicit marker, and the passive is expressed by B or get plus verb en as mean the past or passive participle and it appears as additional modifying element at the end passive thus functions like the extra secondary tense is it plays a distinctive combination of presentness b and pastness verb en uh, suggesting to be the present condition resulting from the past event for example are joined in as in the two halves of the city are joined by the bridge, by a bridge. For this reason, there is no very clear line between the passive and attributes, attributes having passive form. So uh, we have the passive verb groups here, as in the figure 6, 19. And uh, we have the longest, the longest 10 forms that have five serial 10 choices here. So uh, we have it help been it help been going to help been being tested here. So we can see that this is very long and it has the longest ten forms like passive, uh, present, in past, in future, in past and in future. So we, we move backwards here from the word being. So um, that's why we have the stop rules the stop rules to limit the total number. So the, the first one, apart from the primary tense, future occurs only once. So for example, she is going to help to be about to. So we have two future in this, be going to and be about to here. So the second, apart from the primary tense, present occurs only once and always at the deepest level. So, for example, he has been having done it. Um, and number three, apart from the primary tense, the same tense does not occur twice, continuously or consecutively. They will have had done it. So these restrictions limit the total number of finite tenses to 36. Uh, the next, we talk about finite sequence and non-finite tense system. So there are three distinct systems of tenses in English, finite, sequent, sequent and non-finite, or modelized and modelized. So finite, we have 36 tenses, sequent, 24 tenses, <coughs> non-finite or modelized, 12 tenses. So next move to phrasal verb. So as we know that phrasal verbs is a verb plus effort, for example, look out. Of verb prepositions, the shift four of verb effort prepositions, look out for. And especially experientially, a phrase of verbs is a single process rather than process plus circumstantial element. So uh, when you look at this phrase of verbs in transitivity, transi transitivity and mood structure, so we see that they call the meeting up. You have 
we have called on the, the principal, they the agent, the process is the 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 face of a call up and the meeting either go or uh, the actor maybe in the wood structure we have subject past finite and call it the breakator and complement and the adjunct we will continue with the ever ever bill group conjunction group and prepositional uh, preposition group so uh, usually the effort we uh, it can stand alone and this is the head and sometimes it can help pre modifiers and post modifier pre modifier is the grammatical item no lexical modification for example not rather so and post modifiers are embedded clause, clauses of prepositional phrases for example we have here um uh, slowly enough for me to count or quickly enough for me to count or we can have uh, much or much more quickly than I could count so here we can see that the head is quickly faster quickly slowly and the pre modifier is much more or two and the post modifier is than I could count or enough for me to count and conjunction group when in the primary work class of adverbials, there is another class beside adverbs, namely conjunctions re regarding their grammatical roles. Uh, they form three subclasses, namely as linkers, linkers as coordinators, by the subordinators, and continuative, uh, for example, well, oh, a year. Conjunctions uh, form groups. Uh, work groups by modification for example even if just as not until or uh, if only so prepositional group prepositional uh, prepositions are not a subclass of adverbials functionally they are related to verbs they form group modification in the same way as conjunctions for example right, right behind are not with their way off as in right behind the door and preposition group is the modifier head structure expanded from and functionally equivalent to a prepositions. Uh, let's talk about the prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is a preposition plus a, minimal, a nominal group. For example, on the burning deck, we have on is a preposition and the burning deck is a, a nominal group. So. Uh, there is a difference between prepositional phrase and non-finite phrase. Uh, sometimes they can be interchangeable. For example, near the house or adjoining the house. Uh, but not sometimes non-finite can be expanded. Non-finite can be expanded, but prepositional phrase cannot. So, for example, he left the city in his wife's car. So here we can see that the the prepositional phrase in his wife's car we cannot expand, but he left the city taking his wife's car, the non-finite taking his wife's car can be expanded with quietly out of the, the driveway. And this is the example, the boy stood on the burn deck, we can uh, analyze the structure like this. Mm. The next prepositional phrase uh, is we know that a group is expansion expansion of a a group is expansion of a word. Uh, I'm sorry, this is for uh, the group change into a word. And a phrase is a contraction of a clause. So uh, the clause well, you can see the distinction between a group and a phrase, and then the clause. Okay, now come on. Yes. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, Yeah, uh, and clauses have no head and modifier, but phrases are like, called clause-like. And prepositions are the minor predicator or minor process, but the prepositional phrase are minor clause. So the function of a prepositional phrase, they have two functions. The first one is adjunct in the clause, and the second is the qualifier in a nominal group. So to summarize our, our uh, 
uh, presentation today. So let's to talk about the nominals. The nominals, we have the noun, and it may be the common, the proper, or the, the pronoun. And the nominals uh, have the adjective, numeral, and determin determiner. Uh, let's talk about the verbals. The verbal, we have the verb, and the verb has lexical. And in the verbals, we have uh, auxiliary and uh, finite verb. And uh, verbal also have the prepositions uh, as uh, maybe it is the post modifiers and the pre modifiers. And a uh, verbios is the adverbs and the conjunction. The conjunctions can uh, be the linker, the binder, and the continuative. So uh, that's all for our group's presentation.